Canada's Pacific coast is home to extraordinary wilderness. Old-growth coastal rainforests stretch down to the sea, and the region is a maze of glacier-capped mountains, deep fjords, and salmon streams. This is one of the world's last truly wild places. Every year, wildlife on land and at sea converge to find herring and salmon in one of the greatest natural events on Earth. The difference is that beneath the surface, marine predators are not looking for fish, they are listening for it. A wild natural ocean is as full of meaningful sound as a wild forest. Waves whoosh, rain rattles, the earth grumbles. Fish grunt, seals splash. We call this blue sound. It's equivalent to the sounds you hear walking through a forest. If you're just passing through, these sounds, the wind, a distant brook, bird song, are just part of your acoustic background. But if you're thirsty, your brain will focus on the sound of the brook, and that sound will lead you to a cool drink. If other noises obscure the sound of running water, though, you might never know the brook was there. In oceans full of man-made noise, whales and dolphins face problems like this every day. Their lives depend on detecting signals in an increasingly noisy environment. Whales and dolphins get most of their information by listening. But they don't just wait for sounds from fish or other whales. Some species have evolved a sophisticated sonar system called echolocation to find what they need to survive. As a killer whale moves through its murky blue world, it looks around with focused beams of sound. If, say, a Chinook salmon passes through a beam, the whale can identify it and eat it. Families of killer whales have elaborate sets of social calls that qualify as cultural dialects they use to tell families apart. They may even eavesdrop on other whales' echolocation signals. It's an incredibly impressive communication network. Coastal British Columbia also provides feeding grounds for humpback whales. Working alone or in small groups, humpbacks corral small fish like herring to tight balls so that they can capture lots of them in one gulp. We are still learning how humpback whales use sound to find their fish. But for whales and dolphins, sound isn't just about what's for dinner. It's also about avoiding predators, finding mates, navigation, and staying connected to their family. So for them, you can think of sound as their dinner menu, their 911, J-Date, eHarmony, GPS, Facebook, and Twitter, and more importantly, their family stories. Killer whales are always signaling to each other, sometimes over great distances, probably sharing information about where they are and the food that they're finding. Constant communication is essential to their survival. They need a quiet ocean. Just as an opera company has sopranos and tenors and baritones, each species of whale vocalizes and hears in a particular range. Chronic background noise from ships falls into many species' range of hearing, so instead of singing a duet in a quiet opera house, they now find themselves trying to have a conversation on a busy construction site. This is happening throughout their range, and for some species the noise levels are highest in the habitats that are most critical to their survival. In our global economy, most of the things we buy come to us by ship. Shipping noise is everywhere. Few areas in the whole ocean are free of the constant droning of ships' propellers. Oceans Initiative is a non-profit organization dedicated to the conservation of whales and their habitat through scientific research. With our colleagues at Cornell University, Curtin University, and the University of St. Andrews, we are studying how noise from tankers, cruise ships, and other boats may affect whales and dolphins, and, more importantly, what we can do to help. For three years, our teams used hydrophones, basically underwater microphones, from Cornell University and dropped them along the coast of British Columbia. The machine sat on the seabed for six months and recorded whatever passed by. Then we recovered the hydrophones and analyzed the data. We found that shipping noise levels varied widely, so there's good news and bad news. Important feeding habitats for humpback and fin whales were relatively quiet. Unfortunately, the waters that are most important to killer whales are among the noisiest places we recorded. At the busiest times and the busiest shipping lanes, killer whales may be losing most of their opportunities to communicate with each other, and the region as a whole may be about to get even noisier.
Right now, dozens of proposals are on the table for industrial development along the BC coast. Ports, pipelines, and gas terminals would make the quiet areas noisy, and the noisy areas sound even louder to whales and dolphins. British Columbia is not alone in looking to expand industry along its coastline. Chronic noise pollution will only increase as industrial development activities expand around the globe. At Ocean's Initiative, we are working with other scientists, engineers, shippers, and shipbuilders to find ways to make the ocean quieter. Shipbuilders can accomplish a lot through modern designs to ship propellers. We would love to see British Columbia's shipbuilding industry and ports lead the way in building and operating quiet ships in important whale habitats. Until then, the easiest way to keep whale habitats quiet is to slow boats down in places where whales and ships are bottlenecked together or even setting aside some areas as acoustic sanctuaries. Each of these ideas can be part of solving the problem of man-made noise. We are committed to protecting whales and dolphins in British Columbia, and that includes cutting-edge science to identify how we can all keep the ocean quiet and full of fish. We hope you will share in our work on whales and ocean noise. You can help protect wild soundscapes in British Columbia by going to our website to learn more, buying locally made products whenever possible, and sharing this video on your social networks. Thank you for listening, and let's all hope for a quieter ocean tomorrow.